Shalom, shalom, shalom. I want to welcome everyone to King James Bible University. I'll be your host this evening, Elder Lynn. My brothers and sisters, we'll be taking a look at a pretty interesting teaching on this evening. And the heading of this teaching, because the law worketh wrath, for where no law is, there is no transgression. Because the law worketh wrath, for where no law is, there is no transgression. So we very well know, my brothers and sisters, if we're following after the ways of God and we're obeying the voice of our God and doing those things that's required of us according to Scripture, then we clearly know that there's no transgression to the ways of God. If we look at the top of this text, because the law worketh wrath, for where no law is, there is no transgression. So the law works wrath. What law? It's the laws of flesh. The things that we follow of the world, those things bring about the wrath of God upon us because the law worketh wrath. So my brothers and sisters, without further ado, I hope you have your notebook, pad, ink, pen, and paper, and as always, most importantly, your Bible. And let's get started. Because the law worketh wrath, for where no law is, there is no transgression. And we'll start right here. We'll reiterate this text a fourth time. Because the law worketh wrath, for where no law is, there is no transgression. Exactly the point. So from here, let's go to Romans. Let's go to Romans chapter 7 at verse 5, and it's recorded. For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sins, which were by the law, did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. Exactly the point. So when we were to the left side of the plumb line prior before our learning what the truth of God's word is, we were bringing forth fruit unto death, doing those things that's contained in the law of flesh. So if we understand that, then it's clear. Let's, I know it's a little early, my brothers and sisters, but let's pivot just for a moment. And let's go to Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 down through 21. And it's recorded. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, Variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have told you in times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So if we understand what's recorded here in Romans 4 and 15, it says, because the law worketh wrath. So if the law worketh wrath, it's because, let's pivot again, let's go to Exodus chapter 20, and we'll hit verses 13 down to 17, and it's recorded. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his man, maid, manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. So we clearly see these laws that's contained here in this book are the laws of flesh. And as we see, if we're doing those things contained in the law, then it's those things that we have uh made mention of that's contained in Galatians 5, 19 down through 21. See, that's going to bring about, that's going to bring about the wrath of the Most High God. Are you with me? We need to clearly understand that. So let's go back to Romans. Romans 7 and verse 5, and we'll reiterate this text again. And it's recorded. For when we were in the flesh, the motions, the passions of sins, which were by the law, did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. Exactly the point. So if we're doing those things that's contained in the law, because keep one thing in mind, my brothers and sisters, it's not according to the ways of God. See, anything that's not according to the ways of God is going to be clearly to the left side of the plumb line. So it says, for when we were 
in the flesh the motions of sins which were by the law did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. So let's let's pivot again because we want to make sure we understand this. Let's go to Romans chapter 2. And we're going to hit verses 12. And we're going to read down a couple of texts. And it's recorded. For as many as have sinned without law, the law shall also perish without law. And as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. Watch this. For not the hearers of the law are just before Yahweh, but the doers of the law shall be justified. For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, watch this, do by nature the things contained in the law. That's where we was at in Exodus chapter 20, 13 down through 17. These having not the law, which is all the law of the Most High God, are a law unto themselves. So we clearly understand that it's going to be according to what they believe in their mindset. See, eating pork is okay. That's a law unto themselves. That was for them back there. That's a law unto themselves. Going into the buildings, all of these things are the ways of a Christian. This is the way of the world. This is what their belief is. So as, let's reiterate this text again. For when the Gentiles which have not the law do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law are a law unto themselves. The Bible clearly states, thou shalt not kill. How many of these pastors that's in these church buildings do that every Sunday? Get the point? Thou shalt not kill. What is it that they're killing? They're killing the opportunity. They're killing that that person spirit and their opportunity of getting into the kingdom or having a chance of getting into the kingdom of God. They commit murder weekly. It's like clockwork as Elder Johnson always say. So let's reiterate this text again for when the Gentiles which have not the law do by nature the things contained in the law. These having not the law are a law unto themselves. So from here Let's go back to our teaching, and we'll start right here at Romans chapter 6, verse 21. And it's recorded. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. Exactly the point. Why? Because we are following the ways of the world. These are the things contained in Galatians 5, 19 down through 21, those things that we're doing. How, how does all of this work? Watch this. Let's pivot again. Let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 1, and let's hit verses 9 and 10, and it's recorded. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, exactly the point, because a righteous man is going to always follow the ways of the Most High God. He's going to follow those instructions that's contained in the first five books of, of the Most High God's Word knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless, for the disobedient, for the ungodly, and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers, for liars, for perjured persons. Watch this and including if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. Are you with me? We have to understand these things as we are on this journey, my brothers and sisters. The Bible show, shows us everything that we need to see and show, shows us everything that we need to do to get things right with our God. So let's go back to uh, Romans chapter 6 and verse 21, and we'll re reiterate this text again. And it's recorded. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? Exactly the point. For the end of those things is death, as we clearly see. Because right here, verse 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of Yahweh is eternal life through salvation, the anointed, our creator. So from here, let's go to Proverbs and pour some information. Proverbs chapter 14. 
and verse 21. <clears throat> and it's recorded. He that despiseth his neighbor sinneth, but he that hath mercy on the poor, happy is he. From here, let's go to Romans. Romans chapter 1 and verse 32. And it's recorded. Knowing the judgment, the doctrines and teachings of Yahweh, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Exactly the point. These are the ones that are doing those things contained in Galatians 5, 19 down through 21. We have to be mindful of these things because that's going to bring about wrath. From here, let's go back to Romans chapter 7, verse 10. And it's recorded. And the commandment, the instruction, which was ordained to life, I found to be unto death. From here, let's go back to, let's go to Romans chapter 10, verse 5. For Moses described the righteousness, which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. So from here, let's go to Leviticus. Leviticus chapter 18, and let's hit verse 5, and it's recorded. Ye shall therefore keep my statutes, and including my doctrines and teachings, which provide, and if a man do, he shall live in them. I am the Spirit of God, exactly the point. So these are the things, my brothers and sisters, the instruction that we're to follow. See, if we're following the instruction and the commandments and the statutes of our God, then that keeps us away from those things which are of the flesh. We clearly understand that. See, because the scripture tells us that we can't serve too. We clearly know that. So if we understand those things that's recorded here in Scripture, we must, must abide by those things that's of God. So let's reiterate this text again. Ye shall therefore keep my statutes, and including my doctrines and teachings, which provide, and if a man do, he shall live in them. I am the Spirit of God. So let's take a look at those things, that those statutes right here at 11, Deuteronomy 11 and 1, and it's recorded. Therefore thou shalt love the Spirit of God thy guide, and including keep his charge, and his statutes, and including his doctrines and teachings, his judgments, and including his, his instructions, commandments, all the way. That's clear. That's clear. So let's reiterate this text again. Leviticus 18.5 Ye shall therefore for this reason keep my statutes and my doctrines and teachings, which provide in a man do, he shall live in them. I am the Spirit of God. From here, let's go to Second Adres and pull some information. Second Adres, chapter 9, verse 33. And it's recorded. Yet they received it perished, because they kept not the thing that was sown in them, which was what? The word. So we have to keep this always, my brothers and sisters. We can't, we can't forsake the seed that has been planted in us by the Most High God. Because if we do that, we give this seed no chance at germinating. We give this seed no chance to bring forth that sh what's contained in the seed, which is the truth, the wisdom, the knowledge of God's word. So let's, let's take a look at something. Let's go to verse 30, and we'll read down. And it's recorded. And thou spakest, saying, Hear me, O Israel, for thought, and mark my words, thy seed, O Jacob. For I remember, behold, I sow my law in you, and it shall bring fruit in you, and ye shall be honored in it forever. Exactly the point. Because that seed we just found out was contained in the law in Deuteronomy 11 and 1, that we should keep his statutes always. This is always that we should do this because it's been planted in us. And let's, let's reiterate this text again. For behold, I sow my law in you, 
and including it shall bring fruit in you, and you shall be honored in it forever. Exactly the point. Verse 32, and it says, However, our fathers which received the law kept it not, and including observe not thy ordinances. And though the and though the fruit of thy law did not perish, neither could it, for it was thine. It was the most high God's. So let's read verse 36. And it says, For we that have received the law perish by sin, and our heart also which received it. So we clearly got to understand, my brothers and sisters, if we're to the left side of the plumb line and we're not following the ways of the seed that has been planted in us by the Most High God, I can assure you, my brothers and sisters, it's going to cause a detriment to our walk. See, we can't be a recipient of the truth of God's word, turn from it, and do what we, we want to do and thinking we have another opportunity of getting it right. It doesn't work that way. See, if we're to the left side of the plumb line, you're contrary to the ways of God, period. It doesn't, you can't see that any other way. See, this seed was planted in us, and we're of the ground. So this ground should be bringing forth that which is contained in the seed. So in some other uh, respects, we're known as trees. So if we're a tree and we're planted in the garden of the Most High God, we should be bringing forth what fruit that's contained in the seed. So let, let, let's pivot it just for a moment, and we'll come back. So let's go to Genesis chapter 3 and verse, verse 8, and it's recorded. And including, they heard the voice of the Spirit of God, Yahweh walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Spirit of God, Yahweh amongst the trees of the garden. So this is the only part of the text that I need here. Because if we're, if we're a tree and the seed that has been planted in us by the Most High God, we should be bringing, of, bringing forth that which was contained in the seed. It should bring forth fruit. So if the Most High God is strolling through the garden, he should be able to pick any fruit off of your tree that's edible enough for him to eat. Are you with me? See, we have to keep our focus and maintain always a certain focus when we're going through the Bible, my brothers and sisters, but we also have to maintain those things in our heart of what's contained in the seed in the storehouse that's contained in the kingdom. See, that's the only way, providing we hold to the right side of the plumb line, that we can achieve eternal life. But if we're to the left side of the plumb line, because the law work of wrath, we're contrary to the ways of God, we're going to have a problem. So let's go back. Let's go back to uh, Second Address, chapter 9, and we'll reiterate verse 36. And it's recorded. For we that have received the law perish by sin, and our heart also which receive it. So from here, let's go to Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians, chapter 3. Verse 7, and it's recorded. However, prov providing if the ministration of death, written and engraven in stones, was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly re behold, remember the face of Moses for the glory of his countenance, which glory was to be done away. Verse 8. Let's reiterate this text again. But if the ministration of death written and engraven in the stones was glorious so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of the glory of his countenance, 
which glory was to be done away. Verse 8, how shall not the administration of the Spirit, watch this, be rather glorious? For if the, mini, if the ministration of condemnation be glory, much more doeth the ministration of righteousness exceed in glory. Exactly the point. Because we clearly see at the beginning of this teaching in Romans 4.15, the law worketh wrath, for where no law is, there is no transgression. So from here, let's go to Exodus. Exodus chapter 24 and verse 12. And it's recorded. And including the Spirit of God said unto Moses, Come up to me into the mount and be there. And including I will give thee tables of stone. And including the law and instructions, commandments, which I have written that thou mayest teach them. So we see clearly that we have to follow the ways and the instructions of God providing if we're seeking out the eternal life. So from here, let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 1, and it's recorded. At that time, the Spirit of God said unto me, Hew thee two tables of stone like unto the first, and come up unto me into the mount, and make thee an ark of wood. From here, Let's go back to Exodus, chapter 34, and we'll hit verses 29 down to 35, and it's recorded. And it came to pass when Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tables of testimony in Moses' power, when he came down from the mount, that Moses knew not that the skin of his face shone while he talked with them. And when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, remember, the skin of his face shone for thought, and they were afraid to come nigh him. And Moses called unto them, and Aaron, and including all the rulers of the congregation, returned unto him, and including Moses, talked with them. So we see clearly that Moses is speaking with the children of Israel, but he had this veil upon his face. In doing so, verse 32, and afterward all the children of Israel came nigh, and he gave them in commandment all that the Spirit of God had spoken with him in the Mount Sinai. Verse 33, until Moses had done speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. 34, and when Moses went in before the Spirit of God to speak with him, he took the veil off until he came out, and he came out and spake unto the children of Israel that which he was commanded. In verse 35, and including the children of Israel saw the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face shone, and the Moses put the veil upon his face again until he went in to speak with him, which we know is the Most High God. So we clearly see that this is the wisdom that the Most High God has given unto Moses, and Moses was to teach us the children of Israel, the laws, the statutes and commandments of the Most High God. So if we're following after the ways of God, then it's clear we're to the right side of the plumb line. And that brings forth what? It brings forth life. So if we're following those things that's of the world, because the law worketh wrath, we have to keep that in mind. Because I can guarantee you, my brothers and sisters, if we hold to that, then we're going to have a problem with the Most High God. I can assure it. So from here, let's go to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, and let's hit verse 9. And it's recorded, For if the ministration of condemnation be glory, much more do if the ministration of righteousness succeed in glory. Exactly the point. So from here, let's go to Galatians. Galatians chapter 3, and let's hit verse 10. And it's recorded. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse, 
For it is written, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Exactly the point. Let's reiterate this text again. For as many as are of the works of the law, are of the works of the law, are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. So that's where we just come from, from Deuteronomy chapter 11 and verse 1. These are the instructions that we are to receive from the word of God, from the spirit of God, and to follow those things that's contained and recorded here in scripture. Because if we don't, because the law worketh wrath. See, if we're following the ways of the Most High God, there is no where there is no law, there is no transgression. We're following and uh, bearing the fruit of the Spirit. Against such, there is no law. Following the ways of God. But if we're going to go to the left side of the plumb line, we're going to have a problem to that side of the plumb line. Keep that in mind. So from here, let's go to Galatians chapter 5, verse 4. And it's recorded. The anointed has become of no effect unto you, whosoever of you are justified by the law. Exactly the point. That's a full thought. Whosoever is justified by the law. Christ is of no effect to you. <laughs> because your ways that you're thinking that you could receive eternal life through that. And it's not through that. It's through Christ that you're able to receive eternal life. Ye are fallen from grace. For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in salvation the anointing one, neither circumcision availeth anything or uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by promise. Are you with me? So from here, let's go to Matthew. Matthew chapter 5, and we'll hit verse 19. And it's recorded. Whosoever therefore for this reason shall break one of these least commandments, and including shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But, however, whosoever shall do, the, do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Exactly the point. See, because we can't see, we can't receive the spirit by the law. We can't receive it by the law. It's impossible. So from here, let's go to Jeremiah and pull some information. Jeremiah chapter 11. And let's hit verse 3 and it's recorded. And including, say thou unto them, thus saith the Spirit of God, guide of Israel. Cursed be the man that obeyeth not the words of this covenant. Exactly the point. See, if you're not going to obey the ways of God, then you're going to be contrary to his word, which puts you to the left side of the plumb line. It's without question because you have no interest, obviously, in learning the ways of God. You're holding to that which you have learned of the world. See, it's that kind of thinking that's going to be a detriment to our walk, my brothers and sisters. You have some people that clearly is not even trying to seek after God. They just live in the way that they live and thinking that everything's fine and dandy, how they're going about their situation. See, we have to understand something. If we're not doing those things which are contained here in the scripture, then it's automatically going to be contrary to the ways of God, whichever and however our walk is. It's going to be contrary to it. And we have to understand these things. We have to understand that we have committed sin against the Most High God. And we, in order for us to be a recipient of the kingdom, we have to do things that's contained here in Scripture 
those things that's required of us, my brothers and sisters. How is it that we can constantly <laughs> continue to walk contrary to his way? It's impossible that we can do that and be successful on this journey. It's impossible that we could be successful. Keep that in mind. From here, let's go to Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 18. And then we'll hit verse 4, and it's recorded. Remember, behold, all souls are mine. For thought as the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sent it, it shall die. That's clear. There's no sugar coating it. That's clear. If we're to the left side of the plumb line doing anything and saying anything contrary to the ways of God, I can assure you it's going to bring about death. Period. There ain't no other way of looking at it. From here, let's go to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 27 and verse 26. And it's recorded. Cursed be he that confirmeth all the words of this law to do them, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that confirmeth not all the words of this law to do them, and all the people shall say, Amen. From here, let's go to Psalms. Psalms 119 and verse 21. And it's recorded. Thou hast rebuked the proud that are cursed, which do err from thy commandments. Exactly the point. That's going to bring about wrath. What wrath? The wrath of the Most High God. That's clear. Because it's always contrary to his ways, my brothers and sisters. And this, that we have to rid ourselves of this pride. That, that's clearly a must. Every time I run into this, this one word in Scripture, I always try to keep a focus on that. That's something, we, if we have it, we have to get rid of that. That will do you absolutely 2,000% no good when we're trying to follow the ways of the Most High God. You need to rid yourself of that, period. Because that alone will bring about wrath. And don't you ever think it won't. Just that alone. Now think about all of the other things that we have done towards our God. And if providing, we're holding to the left side of the plumb line. That wrath only gets hotter. I want you to clearly understand that. That's got to go. This right here. That has to go away. Period. Because it's a lot of us that's too proudful to do the ways of God. Believe that or not. And if you want to see a, a lot of them, look at them church buildings. There's a lot of them filled with that. So from here, let's go to... Uh, verse 118 and pull some information. Psalms 119 and verse 118. And it's recorded. Thou hast trod down all them that err from thy statutes, for their deceit is falsehood. Exactly the point. Ain't nothing else you can get from that. From here, let's go to John. John chapter 3. And verse 36. And it's recorded. He that believeth on the servant hath everlasting life. And including he that believeth not the son shall not see life. Full thought. But watch this. But the wrath of Yahweh abideth on him. Why? To the left side of the plumb line. We're doing those things contrary to the ways of our God. 
From here, let's go to Romans chapter 1, verse 18. And it's recorded right here, my brothers and sisters. For the wrath of Yahweh is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and including all unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Who hold the truth in unrighteousness. From here, let's go to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 5. And let's hit verse 6. And it's recorded. Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of Yahweh upon the children of disobedience. Yeah. That's clear. Why? Because they're following the ways of the world. They're following the laws of the flesh. Instead of following the ways and the laws of the Most High God. We have to make an election, our election, sure, my brothers and sisters, as to what it is that we're wanting to accomplish while we're here. See, if we're not seeking after God, no matter what this walk is of ours, if we're not diligently seeking after the ways of the Most High God, then you could, you could just about believe that you're still in your fate why? Because everything that you do opposite of that is contrary to the way of God. Period. From here, let's go to Colossians. Chapter 3, and we'll hit verses 5 and 6. And it's recorded. Mortify, that means put to death. Therefore, your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate, affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is what? Idolatry. For which things say the wrath of Yahweh cometh on the children of disobedience. The Bible never changes. Anything contrary to God, you're being disobedient, rebellious, stiff-necked, hard-headed. From here, let's go back to Ephesians. Chapter 2, verse 2, and it's recorded. Wherein in times past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in, watch this, the children of disobedience. Why? Because we want to walk and do things our way. <laughs> we want to do it our way. We, we think we could go in another way opposite of the ways of God verse 3 among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh fulfilling much this the desires of the flesh and a lot of us are still doing that that's the purpose of these teachings for us to learn what those things are so we're finding out what are those things that's required of us so we could con Fess these things to the Most High God and seek after, after the inheritance of God. We have to seek this forgiveness, my brothers and sisters. We can't just continue to sin and walk uh, contrary to the ways of God and thinking that we're okay. That's not how any of this works at all. Among whom also... We all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and including of the mind. That's what we have to change right here. And including were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. So if we understand that, then we must know that we must try and help our brothers and sisters, those of whom are still caught up in this in these prison houses. But we can't make them listen to us, my brothers and sisters. We can only try to share the truth with them. Now, if, again, if they don't want to hear what thus says the Most High God, we can't force it up on them. We have to do exactly what the Scripture says. Shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them and keep it moving. We can't allow them to become a stumbling block for us. We can't stay there and try to force anything on them. 
You have to let the Most High God work with them, providing they're seeking after him. Okay? So from here, let's go to Romans. Let's go back to Romans, chapter 3, and verse 20. And it's recorded. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. Exactly the point. Watch this. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Remember what's contained in 1 Timothy 1 and 9 and verse 10. Well, the law is the knowledge of sin. From here, let's go to Psalms. Psalms 143. And we'll hit verse 2. And it's recorded right here, my brothers and sisters. And including, enter not into doctrines and teachings to judgment with thy servant. For in thy sight shall no man live and be justified. Exactly the point. You have to have this word in you, period. That's the only way, my brothers and sisters, that we can achieve success on this journey in terms of receiving those things that's recorded here in Scripture and including eternal life. Keep that in mind. For me, let's go to Galatians. Galatians chapter 2, verse 16. And it's recorded. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, exactly the point. Why? Because that's going to bring forth wrath. <laughs> How are you going to be justified if you're following the ways of the things contained in the law of flesh. How are you going to be justified doing those things? The Most High God clearly gives us instruction <laughs> not to do this or the things that we're to do. And if we're not following the instruction of God, how is it that we're going to put ourselves in a position or allow ourselves in the position of the things of the world and try to follow those things which is of the flesh? and try to think that we can achieve eternal life, something spirit, through that. How, how, how does that work? Explain that. Let's reiterate this text again. Knowing that man is not justified by the works of the law, but, however, by faith of salvation, the anointed one, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the be belief, by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law. Exactly the point. For by the works of the law, watch this, it's clear again, shall no flesh be justified. None. Watch this. That's good. That's it. Verse 17. But providing if we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners. Is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid, which means no. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. Exactly the point. Why? Because you're trying to rebuild that all over again. So you have been a recipient of the truth of God's word and you have tasted that which is of the spirit. And now you're trying to redo that again. That puts you right here. Bible, you can't get around this, my brothers and sisters. It's impossible for you to get around the, the, the ways and the word of God. From here, let's go to Acts. Acts chapter 13. And we'll hit verses 38 and 39. 
and it's recorded. Be it known unto you, therefore, for this reason, men and including brethren, that through this man is preached, is taught unto you the forgiveness of sins. Verse 39, and including by him all that believe are justified from all things, from which ye could not be justified by the law of Moses. So from here, let's go back to Galatians chapter 3 and verse 11 and pull some information. And it's recorded. But however, that no man is justified by the law in the sight of Yahweh. Watch this. is evident. For the just shall live by faith. That's clear. From here, let's go to Romans chapter 7 and verse 7. And it's recorded. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? That's a question. Two questions. God forbid, which means no. Nay, I had not known sin but by the law. For I had not known lust except the law had said thou shalt not covet. Let's pivot for a moment. Exodus 20 and 17. And it's recorded. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. If we're doing these things contained here, we have a problem. That's going to bring wrath. Keep that in mind. So let's go back to Romans chapter 5. And we'll hit 13. And it's recorded. For until the law, sin was in the world. But sin is not imputed when there is no law. Exactly the point. So if, if there is no law, if there is no sin, then there is no law. See, we have to understand. Let's, let's go back to Galatians for a moment. We'll come back. Galatians chapter 5, and this is early on in this teaching, and we'll reiterate these two texts, verse 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. For where, there is, for where no law is, there is no transgression. See, if we're following the ways of the Most High God, then that's not a law against that. Are you with me? We have to understand these things, my brothers and sisters. It's through and by the Spirit that we can receive eternal life. We need to clearly understand that. Let's say verse 18. Galatians 5, 18. But if ye be led of the Spirit, watch this, you're not under the law. We're following the commandments, the instructions of God. The Bible never changed, my brothers and sisters. No matter where we go in Scripture, it never changes. We have to understand those things that's recorded. We have to find out what those things are that's required of us, and we must confess those things that we've done to God and turn and do the works meant for repentance. It doesn't work any other way. It doesn't work you going into a church building. It doesn't work any other way opposite of the word of God. You wasting time with that. If it's not the ways of God, it's going to be the ways of death, period. 
So let's go back to Romans uh, 5 and 13, and we'll reiterate that text again. And it's recorded. For until the law, sin was not, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. So from here, let's go to 1 John. 1 John chapter 3, watch this, verse 4, we'll highlight that. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. Are you with me? I'm just pausing for effect, my brothers and sisters. No matter where we go through scripture, it's always the same. We can't get around this. We have to and we must follow the ways of God in order to receive a spot into his kingdom. Period. From here, let's go to 1 John chapter 5, verse 17. Watch this. It says, all unrighteousness is sin. That's clear. And including there is a sin not unto death. So let's take a look at something. Let's go to Leviticus. Leviticus chapter 4. And let's look at verse 13 and 14. We'll hit those two texts. And it's recorded. And including if the whole congregation of Israel through ignorance and the thing be hid from his eyes of the assembly and including they have done somewhat against any of the commandments, the instructions of the spirit of God concerning things which should not be done and including are guilty because he's going to hold you 100% guilty of it. See, the sin that's that's not unto death is by, is through our ignorance. So does that mean that God will hold us not accountable for that? No, you, you've done that. See, it's just like, again, ringing a bell. You can't unring a bell. So the sin that we have committed against our God, we cannot un have unsin that. That's, that's, that's not even a word. <laughs> so we clearly see that those things that we have done we have committed already. Those things are recorded here in Scripture. It's already recorded. If you didn't want those things recorded, you should have never done those things. That's the point. Are you with me? But providing that we have been, we thought we were being taught right by our parents, and that doesn't give us a green light. That doesn't give us a pass. Those things have already been committed. Those things already have been done. The objective is to learn of those things that we have done, confess those things, and turn and do the first works meant for repentance so we are able to receive forgiveness and include in mercy from the Most High God. See, I don't care how we look at it, my brothers and sisters, we have a problem with the most powerfulest thing known to man, and that's the Most High God. And if we're not trying to find a way on how to get back right with our God, you don't want a visitation from him. I can guarantee it. There's some verses here in scripture that will scare the hell completely out of you. I'm not kidding you. You don't want a visitation from the Most High God at all. It's important that we learn what we must do to get things right with our God. It's important that we turn to do the first works meant for repentance. It's important that we remove ourselves from the left side of the plumb line if providing we don't want the wrath of God. I can't make it no clearer than that because I can assure you, if you hold to that, there comes a time when you will probably say to yourself, if only I had. And at that point, it's already too late. Keep that in mind. So let's reiterate this text again. Verse 13, Leviticus 4, 13. And providing if the whole congregation of Israel is sinned through ignorance and the thing 
be hid from the eyes of the assembly and including they have done somewhat against any of the commandments, the instructions of the Spirit of God, concerning things which should have not been done and are guilty, when the sin which they have sinned against it is known, then the congregation shall offer a young bullock for the sin, and including bring him before the tabernacle of the congregation. We have to offer these bodies, my brothers and sisters, as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto the Most High God, which is our reasonable service. I want you to clearly understand that. There is nothing on the, on the face of this earth opposite of your body that you could offer to God. Because I can assure you, money ain't going to get it. You waste some time right there. I guarantee you, everything belongs to the Most High God. How are you going to give him something that already belongs to him? That absolutely makes no sense. Think about that. Salah on that. How do we offer something that already belongs to him? Keep those things in mind as we are on this journey. From here, let's go back to Romans. Romans chapter 5. In verse 20, and it's recorded, Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Exactly the point, because if we're given this life for the life of Christ, then we want grace. We don't want wrath. We want grace. From what? The sins that we've committed against our God. See, confessing those things and doing the things that's right according to the word of God is the only way that we can escape the wrath of, of the Most High God. Because I guarantee you, if you're going into a church building, you're only killing that fire against the Most High God even hotter. Keep that in mind as you're crawling into these prison houses. It's only getting worse. Let me show you something. Let, let's, let's pivot for a moment. <clears throat> let's go right here to Leviticus chapter 26 and let's take a look at something here. Leviticus 26 and 26 and it says, and including when I have broken the staff of your bread, 10 women shall bake your bread in one oven. Now we need to understand this right here. If we're looking at this cornerly, that's talking about <laughs> the knowledge and these spirits that's baking your bread in that, this oven. That's that church building you find yourself in Sunday after Sunday after Sunday and including on Wednesdays when you listening to that guy teach you about what's contained in the word of God. At least so he think that anyway. Are you with me? Verse 27. If you will not for all this hearken unto me, but walk contrary to me, then I will walk contrary unto you also in fury, and I will even, and I even, I will chastise you seven times for your sins. So every time you crawl into that place, you only add to the anger of the Most High God. Let's look at it that way. You're making things not worse and worse for oneself when that happens. Why? Especially when the truth have come to these individuals and they have turned away from it. Keep that in mind. So let's go back to our teaching. We'll reiterate verse 20 again. Romans 5 and 20, and it should record it. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abound, grace did much more abound. Exactly the point. So from here, let's go to 1 Ezra's. 1 Ezra chapter 8, verse 75 and we'll hit verse 75 through 77. And it's recorded. 
For our sins are multiplied above our heads, and including our ignorances, have reached up unto heaven. For ever since the time of our fathers, we have been and are in great sin, even unto this day. That's exactly the point. Even until this day, when we have to understand something, my brothers and sisters, when we're reading and studying the word of God, the Bible is telling you something. It's talking directly to you. It's talking to no one else but you. Keep this in mind because you're the one that committed the sin against God. So we have to remove everybody else and single only ourselves out of the crowd because it's specifically talking directly to you. Keep that in mind. Because God is not interested in what Sue done. He's not interested in that. He's talking directly to you. What is it that you are going to do to straighten this thing out between you and him? Are you going to hold to his ways or are you going to hold to the ways of the world? We have to, whatever we choose, we have to make that election sure. That's clear, my brothers and sisters. We can't get around the scripture. I don't care how you try to. You, you're not going to get around the word of God, period. For ever since the time of our fathers, we have been and including are in great sin even until this day. Take a look at these buildings. Take a look around you. You got these young men that's walking around killing up one another and doing all of this, this foolishness. Let, let, let me show you something. Let's pivot one more time. We'll come back. <clears throat> Genesis 9. Uh, give me a minute. Right here. Genesis 9 and 6. And it's recorded. Whosoever sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. For the image of God made he man. I brought you here for one particular reason. Because we're killing the very image of God every time we do that. And don't you think for one minute that God is not going to hold you responsible for that. And don't you think that he's not going to bestow his wrath upon the ones that have done this. You killing the very image of God when that happens. You do not want that visitation. I can guarantee it, my brothers and sisters. If we're not seeking after God, we're 100% contrary to the ways of God, no matter what it is that we're doing, no matter what it, type of life you think that you're living. If it's not the ways of God, it's contrary to it. Keep that in mind as we're on this journey. So from here, let's go back to, uh, let's go back to First Address chapter 8, and we'll reiterate those last three texts, 75 through 77. And it's recorded. For our sins are multiplied above our heads, and including our ignorances, have reached up unto heaven. Exactly the point. For ever since the time of our fathers, we have been and including are in great sin, even unto this day. Verse 77. And our sins, including our fathers, we with our brethren and including our kings and our priests, were given up unto the kings of the earth, to the sword and including to the captivity and including for a prey with shame unto this day. You can't get around nothing recorded in the word of God. It shows exactly what it is that you are doing. Every time you look into this Bible, it reflects everything that you have done to God. You cannot get out from it. Because why? The word of God brings it to light. That's the power of the word of God. It shows you the things that you have done towards him, and it shows you the things that you must do in order 
to get back right with him, let alone getting into his kingdom. We have to start from that first. We have to confess these things that we have done. And not only that, but we have to turn and do the first works meant for repentance, providing we want a spot into his kingdom. So we got a lot of work to put in here. Oh yeah, my brothers and sisters, we got some work to put in. From here, let's go to Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 7 and verse 19. And it's recorded. They shall cast their silver in the streets and including their gold shall be removed. Their silver and including their gold shall not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of the spirit of God. Exactly the point. I don't care how rich you think you are and what, how nice you think you've been with, with doing what you've been doing. That's not going to save you in the day of wrath. Keep that in mind because if you've been contrary with all your riches to the left side of the plumb line, your riches will not save you from the wrath of the Most High God. Period. Dang, you ain't got enough money on the planet that can do that. <laughs> Keep that in mind. They shall not satisfy their souls, neither fill their bowels, because it is the stumbling block of their iniquity. I'm just pausing for effect. Let's let's pivot for a second. Let's go to uh, Second Address. <clears throat> second Address, chapter sixteen. Let's hit verse sixty-one. I believe it is. Uh, no, it's not sixty-one. Sixty-five. Yeah, sixty-five. Second Address, sixteen sixty-five. And when your sins are brought forth, ye shall be ashamed before men. And including your own sins, watch this. <laughs> your own sins should be your accusers in that day. They're going to tell it on you. Why? Providing you're contrary to the way of God. You ain't got to worry about nobody else telling it on you. They're going to tell it. Your own sins. Why? Because everything you've done is contrary to the ways of God. Always remember that. From here, let's go back to uh, Ezekiel. We'll re reiterate verse 19, Ezekiel 7 and 19. They shall cast their silver in the streets and including their gold shall be removed. Their silver and including their gold shall not be able to deliver them in the day of their wrath, of the day of the wrath of the Spirit of God. They shall not satisfy their souls, neither fill their bowels because it is the stumbling block of their iniquity. From here, let's go to Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 4, and it's recorded. Riches profit not in the day of wrath, but however righteousness delivereth from death, exactly the point. Because the law worketh wrath, for where no law is, there is no transgression. Keep this in mind, my brothers and sisters, as we walk on this journey. From here, let's go to Zephaniah and pull some information. Zephaniah chapter 1, and we'll hit verse 18. And it's recorded. Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Spirit of God's wrath, but the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy. Exactly the point. For he shall make even as speedily radiant of all them that dwell in the land. From here, let's go to 2 Kings. 2 Kings, chapter 22, and we'll hit verse 13. And it's recorded. Go ye inquire of the Spirit of God for me, and including for the people, and including for all Judah, concerning the words of this book that is found. For great is the wrath of the Spirit of God that is kindled against us because our fathers have not hearkened unto the words of this book to do according unto 
all that which is written, watch this, concerning us. We act like we, <laughs> we act like we just, you know, we just so laissez-faire about things, you know what I mean? We just, you know, we walk into these buildings and we really think that we're doing something and worshiping God and thinking that we're doing all of these things when we're contrary to his way. And we have no sense of urgency at all to learn what it is that we must do to get things right with our God. How is it that we can go into these buildings Sunday after Sunday after Sunday after Sunday after Sunday and thinking that this is the way to worship God and we're not even reading and studying the word of God ourselves? How is that? We're just going clearly off of what some guy's telling us. Hell, he needs somebody to tell him what the truth is. That's the point. A lot of these people that's in these church buildings, they open up the Bible one time, probably one time that day. And after that, that's it. They're never to open it up again until another seven days from that. Is that seeking after God? No. That's not seeking after God. That's wasting time. That's being contrary to the ways because the instruction that we must follow is recorded here in Scripture. So if we're not reading the instruction, then how is it that we can get things right? I'll give you an example of that. Have you ever, have you ever, because um, I've done it once before, and I, I, I won't tell a tale about it. I've done it once before. But have you ever re ordered a, or you at, purchased a, a stand of some sort and you always want to look at the box. You look at the box and you, you want to put it together according to that visual image that you see on the box. I can assure you just by experience that if that's the only thing that you're going to go on, it's going to fall. 100%. Why? Because it does that if we're not reading the instruction. I had to learn that. I thought I could put it together without reading the instruction. Not knowing that when I thought it was all together, I got five screws left. Those, those five screws belong to something on the stand. And if the five screws wasn't there, guess what happened? It collapsed. Why? Didn't follow instruction. So how is it that we can go into these buildings without following the instructions that's recorded in the word of God and receive eternal life? How is that? Explain that to me. It's impossible that you can achieve that. Why? Because we're not reading the instruction. If we're opposite of the instruction, I can guarantee it's not going to go well. It's not what we think, my brothers and sisters. It's what's recorded here in the word of God that we must follow. We have to get out of that, that habit of thinking that this is the way of doing this. And we have to get out of that way of thinking. Because if we're not reading and studying and finding out what those truths are, we're going to run into all kinds of problems on this walk. And the more problems that we run into, we need to rectify those problems, my brothers and sisters, before this flesh we in expire. Because if we allow that flesh to expire before we can get an opportunity to get things right, shame on us. Shame on us. So from here, let's reiterate this text again. Second Kings 22 and verse 13, and it's recorded. Go ye inquire of the Spirit of God for me and including for the people and for all Judah concerning the words of this book that is found. For great is the wrath of the Spirit of God that is kindled against us because our fathers have not hearkened unto the words of this book to do according unto all that which is written concerning us, concerning Israel. From here, let's go to John. 
John chapter 9, and let's hit verse 41. And it's recorded. Yahushua said unto them, If ye were blind, ye should have no sin. But now ye say, We see for thought, therefore your sins remaineth. I want you to salah on that during the week. During the rest of this week, salah on this text right here. Let's reiterate it. Salvation said unto them, If providing ye were blind, ye should have no sin. <laughs> but now we say, we see, therefore your sin remaineth. Let's go to from here, John 15 and verse 22. <clears throat> and it's recorded. If providing I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin. However, now they have no cloak for their sin. They have no excuse for their sin. None. See, one thing's for certain, my brothers and sisters, this word not only showcase those things that we have done against our God, but it again showcase those things that we must do to get right with our God. So we are learning this truth and we're, we're understanding those things that's recorded in scripture. That leaves us, my brothers and sisters, without excuse. It clearly leaves us without excuse. It's not one of those type of situations where you could say, I didn't know. Oh yeah, you clearly knew. There's a meal being served here at KJBU daily, twice on the Sabbath. Oh, yeah, you knew. I can guarantee it. You knew. The problem is, you know how when we were growing up and uh, your parents prepared your dinner for you and you sat there at the table and you ate your dinner and a lot of us poked at the vegetables? Well, that's the same thing contained here in the Word of God, God's truth. We poked at it, and we didn't eat it. I want you to stay with me. And not doing such, what, what happens? Because the first thing your parents tell you, eat your vegetables. They're what? They're good for you. It's the same way here in Scripture. See, the Scripture show, shows us those things that we have done towards God. And a lot of those things we don't want to have remembered. They're so bad. But here's the power of the word of God. It showcased that anyway. Because you got to face up to that, my brothers and sisters. You, you can't slip nothing past God. Absolutely nothing. The only thing that we could do is confess those things that we have done. Confess those sins that we have done. Because he clearly knows that, the, that you have done that. So it, it, there's no way that you can deny that. It's impossible. Because one thing's for certain, let's pivot just for a moment. Deuteronomy 30 and 19. And I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. This is the only part of that text I need. From the time you were brought forth on this planet, even up until the time that you are hearing my voice, it's been recorded. That's something you can't get out of. You see how the word don't let you get past anything? It's, it's recorded. And not only that, but here's something else you need to look at. Let's go to Romans 8, 16. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. So it's going to bear witness whether you are a child of God or 
it'll bear witness that you don't belong to the most high God. You cannot get around this walk, my brothers and sisters. It's impossible. I want you to clearly understand that. So let's finish out this teaching as we wind down. Let's go back to John. And we'll reiterate John 15 and 22. <clears throat> and it's recorded. If providing I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin. But now they have no excuse for their sin. Exactly the point. From here, let's go to James. James chapter 4, and we'll hit verse 17. And it's recorded. Therefore, for this reason, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him... It is sin, because the law worketh wrath. For where no law is, there is no transgression. From here, let's go to Second Peter. Second Peter chapter two, and verse twenty-one, and it's recorded. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness, exactly the point, than after they have known it, to turn from the holy commandment, the instruction delivered unto them. So it's, it's the same way as we had made mention, or as I had made mention early on in the teaching. You got some people, my brothers and sisters, that's not even trying to seek after God, period. But you have those that's seeking after God and open the Bible. Now, let me share something with you. I've made mention of it once before, and I'll make mention of it again here. If any of us go through this book and we understand one verse, just one verse, we clearly have an understanding of the text. We clearly can regurgitate it and tell each other exactly what that, that text means. Have a clear understanding. God is going to hold you 100% accountable for everything else recorded in his word. I want you to clearly understand that. You're going to be held accountable at that point. Again, let's reiterate this text. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy instruction delivered unto them. That's clear, my brothers and sisters. You can't get it no clearer than that in Bible. It's clear. We must, we must follow the ways of God. It's a must, if providing we're trying to seek a spot into his kingdom. So from here, let's go to Romans. Romans chapter 1, and we'll hit 20 and 21, and it's recorded. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even as eternal power and including Godhead for thought so that they are without excuse because that when they knew Yahweh, they glorified him not as Yahweh, neither were thankful for thought, but became vain in their, imagina in their imaginations and including their foolish heart was darkened because the law worketh wrath for where no law is, there is no transgression. From here, we'll reiterate verse 32, Romans 1 and 32, and it's recorded. Who knowing the judgment of Yahweh, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. From here, let's go to Psalms. Psalms 37 and 1. Verse 18, 
and it's recorded. When thou sawest a thief, then thou consenteth with him and hath been partaker with adulterers. From here, let's go to Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 28 and verse 4, and it's recorded. They that forsake, abandon the law, praise the wicked. Exactly the point. But such as keep the law, contend with them. From here, let's go to second uh, Thessalonians. Chapter 2, verse 12, and it's recorded. They, excuse me, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure, watch this, in unrighteousness, because the law worketh wrath. From here, let's go to Romans. Chapter 2, verse 8. And it's recorded. But however, unto them that are contentious and including do not obey the truth, however, obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath, tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil of the Jew first and also of the Gentile. From here, let's go to Job. Job chapter 24, verse 13. <clears throat> and it's recorded. They are of those that rebel against the light, against the spirit, for thought. They know not the ways thereof, nor abide in the paths thereof. So if we're not in the ways of the Most High God and trying to seek after Him, we have 100% a problem with the Most High God, period. We'll pull this last text, my brothers and sisters, and it's recorded right here in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. And we'll hit verses 8 through 12. And it's recorded. In flaming fire, taking vengeance of them that know not God and that obey not the message of our creator, salvation, the anointed. Who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the creator and including from the glory of his power? When he shall come to be glorified in his saints and including to be admired in all them that believe, because our testimony among you was believed in that day. Verse 11, wherefore also we pray always for you that our guide would count you worthy of this calling and including fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and including the work of faith with power. In verse 12, and it's recorded, that the way that the name of our creator, salvation, the anointed way, may be glorified in you and including ye in him, according to the grace of our guide and including the creator, salvation, the anointed one. So my brothers and sisters, we see clearly that because law worketh wrath, if we're contrary to the ways of God, wrath is going to come. For where no law is, there is no transgression. So if we're following the ways of the Most High God, there is no law, there is no transgression to what we're following, which is the instruction of the ways of God. So my brothers and sisters, I hope this teaching edifies all of you and helps someone along their journey. And I hope that you continually search the scriptures, my brothers and sisters, for the truth of God's word. 
We have to understand these things as we're on this journey. We have committed all of this sin against our God, and it's important that we understand those things, confess those things that we have done, and turn and do the works meant for repentance. Keep one thing in mind. We can't say that we didn't do it because each day that we have been upon this planet has been recorded against us. And the spirit itself is a witness against those things that we have done and those things that we haven't done. Okay? So my brothers and sisters, as always, till the ground from whence you've come. Receive your own daily. I cannot express this enough. And never, my brothers and sisters, never let anyone pull you away from what you know to be true in God's word. So until we meet again, I say to each and every last one of you, Shalom.